I remember waking up in the middle of the night, wide awake from deep sleep, staring at the ceiling, wondering what the hell am I doing here, in this room, in this bed, in this life. And I was doing my PhD at the time and my chronic back pain had reached its peak. I clenched my entire body in the darkness as if that would somehow wake me up somewhere else. But it wasn't a dream. I was in a place I didn't want to be in. I was anxious and depressed. My health was the worst it had ever been after two years of constant drinking, partying and smoking. And sitting in his desk all the time, had me fat, going bald, and far from happy. Of course, I'd put on a happy face, but underneath that smile, I knew something wasn't right. And looking back, the back pain was my body's cry for help. In this video, I'm going to share with you how I overcame back pain. I'm not saying it will work for you because I'm not a medical professional, but I hope this will give you some hope and guidance if you're in a place that you don't want to be in. So let's get into it. How I overcame back pain. One of the worst things that I experienced. It is a constant numbing, nervy pain. If you know what I'm talking about, I feel for you. And there are many different kinds of back pain. Hernia, protrusion of the disc, dehydration. But I think this video will in some sense apply to whatever case you have. And eventually I'll tell you the seven best exercises I found to strengthen your back so that back pain is not a worry anymore from my early 20s throughout my mid 20s i spent the student lifestyle i was partying a lot i was drinking a lot i was eating bad food i was sitting at a desk one day i woke up with this pain in my back i did the thing that almost any guy does which is oh you know i slept wrong i'm gonna wait a day and when it didn't heal the next day i was like oh it's just a couple days oh it's just one of those that takes two weeks until it started going over three weeks and i started to get worried i was like wait what is going on why is this pain that always used to go away wherever it was in my body just staying and not not only staying but actually getting worse the pain that was very concentrated in my lower back started spreading down my right leg like this numbing paralysis sensation and it also spread to my left you can imagine that i was getting anxious and very scared what was going on and i started doing all kinds of research and literally it got to a point where the only position that would be painless for me was to lie down on my bed belly down and as someone that grew up loving sports this really had me close to depression i was so sad thinking to myself will this ever go away will i ever be able to do sports again be properly functional just walk around without this thing in my brain in my body to think that now i don't feel this and that i am you know healthier than i've ever been as i enter my 30s this is really truly one of the biggest gratitudes i have about my life so i know for a lot of you that are dealing with back pain but also other injuries or even other situations in life where you feel you're stuck where you feel there's no hope where you're going closer and closer to depression i hope in some ways this this story can help you overcome that pit that you are in I started doing all this kind of mainstream advice, these yoga stretches. Some of them helped, a lot of them didn't, and most of the time the pain stayed the same. And that's when I started really looking into sort of other methods. I was researching and reading all kinds of things. And then I first came across Dr. Goodman, who had this 12-minute training called Foundation Training, which was extremely helpful for me to start with nothing but my own body, start strengthening and challenging the, the flexibility and the muscles in the back of my body, the posterior chain. And he made me realize something that's super important, which is that the most important muscles in our body are actually in the back of our bodies, not the front. Most people just care about the front because that's what you get to show off, right? Like my chest, my arms and all this, but everything that makes you hold yourself upright, keep a good posture, stand up against gravity, open yourself up to the world with confidence, all those muscles are in the back of the body because of our modern sedentary lifestyle of being caved in this is what causes a lot of the back pain as the spine folds and the discs protrude and hit the nerve which causes the nervy pain you must strengthen the muscles in your posterior chain so that naturally your posture improves naturally the muscles that support those discs those ligaments and joints and tendons are strong that's when the nerves won't be interrupted by these protrusions the mainstream medical advice which is so quick to suggest surgeries and injections is not the way to go our bodies are naturally healing they are naturally supposed to function healthily it's about understanding bodily mechanisms bringing health and function back to the areas that we've neglected and then you can gradually overcome back pain the next influence that i came across is this guy called ben patrick also known as knees over toes guy and the biggest thing 
thing that he taught me the hip flexors as an extremely important muscle not just for your athletic performance and your everyday functionality but for your back as well and because it is so intimately linked with posture and one of his exercises that he's well known for which is the atg split squat that is something that i started incorporating into my routine in that room in milan but also still nowadays i do this to make sure i have flexibility and strength in my hip flexors uh, but now looking back Dr. Goodman's foundation training already had a lot of these elements of stretching hip flexors. And so these two guys, for me, were bright lights in the darkness of back pain and the, and the, and the confusion that surrounded how to get better. So let's get into the seven exercises that are going to help make your lower back bulletproof for injury. And even if you are currently injured, these exercises are going to be the ones that help you overcome back pain. They are in some sort of gradation. So the first ones, you know, you can do even if you're in pain because they will likely relieve pain. But of course, with all of these movements, once you do them, if it causes pain that you didn't feel before, then obviously that's a sign you're not ready for this exercise. If the pain doesn't increase, if the pain decreases, or if the pain is manageable and you feel good after doing the exercise, then that's a good sign and you should keep doing it to strengthen those muscles. First exercise is the sphinx position, probably the most painless position for anyone with back pain to lie belly down on a bed and hold yourself up by the elbows. As that becomes easier, you go onto your hands uh, until you can move back and, you know, stretch further and further. This is quite, uh, uh, I guess, a popular yoga position where your upper body is almost upright and you want to build up to this position. The second exercise, which is more of a stretch, is called a cat camel. And this is when you go from arched back to a curved back. You want to arch your back and curve your back, arch your back, curve your back. And what this does is it uh, extends as well as flexes your spine, which puts your spine through the full range of motion that it should be able to go through. A lot of back pain advice goes to one side. Some people just say you have to like curve it so that there's enough space for the discs to come back. Other people say you have to, you know, bend your back so that the discs don't protrude anymore. But in my opinion and in my experience, what helped the most is to do both to bring general flexibility and functionality to your entire spine in its full range of motion. Uh, and this is one of the exercises that is, let's say, the next up from the Sphinx position. If you can do this, you know, you can keep moving forward. One of my favorite exercises for the lower back, this is still included in my bodyweight workout routines, which you can find in the description and also in many other workouts in my bodyweight program that I just released. An amazing exercise that you can do anywhere, you know, on your bed, on your kitchen counter. As you hold your upper body still, you know, horizontally perched somewhere and you raise your lower body, you know, and it tenses your glutes, your lower back and even you know, your entire posterior chain if done properly. Uh, and this is an exercise that can really strengthen the glutes and the lower back, which is again, extremely important for having uh, not just stronger muscles back there, but good posture uh, and being very functional. Be nice to hang upside down to be able to do this. But basically what this is doing, it's kind of like elongating your spine. So your spine bones have discs between them. And if you elongate it, there's a little space where they have a little breather, you know, because sitting down, you've just crunched them up and they start squeezing out, right? And all the water starts to escape. So if you stretch it, the nutrients, the water can get back in. This might be bro science because there's some literature saying that discs cannot get water again. If you elongate the spine, that will provide a lot of pain relief and it will just feel right. And if you can't hang upside down, variation that you can do is just dead hangs. Even better than dead hangs is to do a dead hang and let your toes rest 
on the ground. And what that does is it actually allows you to transfer your weight slowly from your hands to the floor, just enough, not too much, just enough that your hips can drop. It's all, it almost feels like your hip dislocating from your spine and dropping. And with that motion, you have to try this. You will feel your spine just elongate like and, and stretch. And this is one of my favorite exercises. And even if you have a healthy back, this is very good practice, spinal decompression, because we're sedentary a lot of the time. Next exercise is the good mornings. And I'll also add Dr. Goodman's good morning holds. I don't know if he has a name for this. He probably does. I'll call it the Goodman holds. Good mornings are again, amazing exercises that light up your entire posterior chain and work your posture. And this variation that you can do with Dr. Goodman's uh, holds is when you hold a certain position of the good morning and you just hold it. It's like an isometric hold. And holds are extremely effective ways of training, uh, like dead hangs and, and these uh, kinds of trainings. But that gets neglected a lot in modern fitness industry because it's all about reps and pump. But in terms of like functional health, the holding is actually a very effective training method. This position, let me tell you, more than 30 seconds, you will feel great. And it's really strange. You just feel great from that one like hold. Highly, highly recommend you try that out. The ATG split squats, but with a, a stretch variation. This is me literally combining one of Dr. Goodman's stretches with an ATG split squat from knees over toes, guys. So you can actually do an ATG split squat that stretches your hip flexors and then raise your arms to rotate it to the sides or raise your arms above your head, lean back and away from the hip flexor that's being stretched. And this will cause an incredible stretch along the side of your entire body. I mean, you can try this. You will have never felt a stretch like this. And this hip flexor stretch is so important. Better posture, better hip health, better hip flexibility, and therefore better back health. Final exercise that I will share with you is the Jefferson curl. Another thing I learned from Mr. Ben Patrick, and you'll be very familiar with positions like this, and you just stretch and try to touch your toes and go beyond your toes. Try with very light weight, so it helps you to drop. And then you do these little raises where you unfold your spine a little bit. I think the Jefferson curl, what's really cool about this, you will feel your lower back stretch. Those are the seven exercises that I really, really recommend. There are more. Your back up front of your belly button, heel back, up, knees in front of your belly button. But those are the seven that I really, really recommend that help me get over back pain. From this process, what I learned is that injuries are signs of a lack of flexibility, lack of strength in certain areas of our body. It's your body literally giving you a sign and saying, hey, something's not right. Your posture is not right. Your lifestyle is not right. That's what your body is telling you. And you have to be able to listen to your body because oftentimes your body knows things before your mind. If you are aware enough to listen to it, you won't go into these deep pits like I was in. So once I understood that overcoming injury was about building strength and flexibility in the right areas around the right ligaments and joints, then I started incorporating, you know, basic body weight training into my routine as well. And of course it was Corona at that time. So there was no gym. So I was doing these push-ups and, and inverted rows and dips in my room. You know, looking back to those days, that was what gave me the, the strength you know, the strength to make a bigger decision in my life, to actually change something, which in my case was to drop out of the PhD and to return to Korea and pursue another path. I guess the big message that I want to leave with you is, is that sometimes it's really the smallest decision to work on your body, fix something that's not right. Daily improvements in that realm will give you the confidence to make bigger and bigger decisions that can have massive ripple effects in your life. Guys, if you have any questions, please leave them down in the comments or reach out to me on Instagram, you know, the struggles that you're going through and I'll try to help as much as I can. Thanks very much. I hope that helped.